Today I want to share with you how to dry apples in the oven. It's a wonderful way to preserve this fantastic bounty that we get this time of year. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth and ferment, sourdough, and more. And if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Right now, our markets are filled with a wonderful selection of apples. And I'm gonna be making some apple desserts over the next couple of weeks, some of which call for dehydrated or dried apples. So I thought I would show you how I dry these in the oven. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The next thing you wanna do is get a nice big bowl, fill it partially with water, and then to that, you wanna add some type of acid. I'm using apple cider vinegar. I think that's very appropriate. Uh, you could also use lemon juice, or if you're a canner and you have some powdered citric acid, you can mix that into the water. Whatever the case may be, you want to have a little bit of acidulated water to put your apple slices in as we cut them to keep them from browning. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this core, <laughs> and then I'm gonna take an apple corer, and I'm gonna go right down the middle. Boom, just like that. And then I'm just gonna pull that out. It's got the seeds and the core in it. Now what I like to do is just remove uh, the seeds and then I'm gonna save these cores and I'm gonna use those to make apple cider vinegar, raw apple cider vinegar. And you can make it homemade. And if you've not done that before, it's a lot of fun and it's very easy. And I'll put a link in the iCards above where I have a video showing you how to do that. Now today I'm gonna to dry apple slices or apple rings um, because I like to put them on a string. I just think that looks so cute and festive. And so I'm just going to slice these about a quarter of an inch thick. For some, I'm gonna leave the skins on because that makes great snack and the skin is very nutritious and it's a little, little chewy so some people like to remove the skins, but for some of them I like to leave the skins on. And speaking of chewy, the type of apple rings that I'm gonna make will have some flexibility to them because these are pretty sweet apples. And the amount of sugar in the apple determines uh, how dry you can get it, whether you're doing it in an oven like we're doing it today or whether you're doing it in a dehydrator. And you can also do this in a dehydrator. It's going to take a little longer. You're gonna do it at a little lower temperature and it's gonna take a little longer but the sweeter, this is something that's good to know, the sweeter your apple, the, and because of the high sugar content, the more flexible it's going to be uh, when it dries. Now, you can leave these in the oven a little longer or in the dehydrator a little longer to try to get them as firm or crisp as possible. But if you want to make apple chips, it's best to start with apples that have a low sugar content, like your Granny Smiths. These are very good for making apple chips. So for the first one, I'm gonna leave the skin on, and then some of the others will, will peel, because the ones that, I like to leave the skin on, as I said, for the ones that'll be snacks, and the ones that I'm gonna peel, I'm gonna use in a recipe later on that call for dried apples. So I'm just gonna do this by hand, and I'm just gonna to try to cut these as thin as I can. As I said, about a quarter, a quarter of an inch thin. If you can do them a little thinner than that, all the better. That's a little hard for me. <laughs> but the thinner they are, the quicker they dry. And it's not perfect, it's not a perfect science, but this is about what you're looking for. And I'll overlay a close-up picture so you can see exactly what that looks like, but just about a quarter of an inch and that'll be perfect. And then as you slice these, just go ahead and put them in the acidulated water to soak. So I'll go ahead and I'll continue to, to slice these up and get them into the water. Now for the next one, I'll do the same thing. Just remove the stem and I'm gonna take out the core and then we'll peel this one and I'll tell you what we can do with the skins. Now this one I'm gonna peel. Now again, do not throw out these apple skins. You can add these to the bowl with the cores and you can use these to make homemade apple cider vinegar 
or you can dehydrate these skins and turn them into a lovely flavored apple powder and then you can use that in var various recipes where you want to have some nice apple flavoring. You can sprinkle it on top of muffins. There's a lot you can do with it. You can also save these and add them when you make bone broth to get or, or one of the mineral broths and uh, I'll link to those in the iCard where I show you how to make, I have a <laughs> detailed playlist on how to make uh, bone broth, all kinds of bone broth. And I also have a mineral broth. And adding uh, apple strips or pear strips uh, or even the cores uh, add nutrition and flavor. So be sure to save all of these scraps and you can use them in all sorts of recipes. Then again now with the ones that, with the apple that's been peeled. We're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm just going to try to do my best at cutting quarter inch slices and then we'll drop them into the acidulated water. My bowl is getting pretty full so what I'm going to do is show you the next step to prepare them to dry. So all you want to do is just take them, lay them out on a clean dish towel. I'm just in no particular order. I'm just going to do this quickly and then we're going to put another dish towel on top and blot them. Now another way that you can do this is when you're slicing them you can just toss them in lemon juice or in a little bit of the vinegar. You don't need to soak them in the water. However, I find this works a little better for slowing down the oxidation and uh, per, uh, retaining some of the nice lighter color when you go to dry them. So I've just got this second clean dish towel on top and I'm just blotting them to get some of the, the acidulated water off of them. Then the next step is I take a baking sheet. Now I've got parchment paper underneath this rack. And if all you have is the baking sheet and a little bit of parchment paper or whatever type of lining you'd like to use for your baking sheet, that's fine. You can go ahead and put them right onto the baking sheet or onto a parchment lined baking sheet. If you have one of these cooling racks that fits inside of your uh, baking sheet or if you have, some people have those stackable cooling racks. I don't have one of those, but those are great too. If you have one of those that can go into your oven, you can use that also. Uh, but whatever way you choose to do this, they will dry. And so we're just going to go ahead and just put them on right like this. Nothing fancy. And then we'll get ready to pop them in the oven. So I've got them all on my sheet here and they'll be ready to go into the oven. 200 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll start checking them at two hours and see how they are. Uh, I just dry these plain because that's how we like to snack on them and I'm also going to be using some of them in recipes. However at this point if you want to sprinkle a little cinnamon on them or nutmeg, allspice, whatever seasoning uh, spices you like, you can do that at this point. And you can also just toss them in a bowl with the spice to help them get nicely and evenly, co nicely and evenly covered. Here are my apple slices all dried and what I did was at the two hour mark I checked them to see how they were doing. I checked to see if any were sticking onto the rack that I used, which that's not a problem if you've just got them on the parchment paper. But if you have them on the rack you can check them. If I saw any were sticking I just flipped them over and then I rotated the trays in my oven so that they would all be exposed to the heat evenly. Then I checked them again at four hours and some of the ones that were real thin were definitely done so I took those out and then between four and six hours I just kept checking on them again. Some of the thicker cut ones uh, took about six hours and when I say took about six hours that's to the uh, stage that I wanted them to be. I wanted them to be somewhat malleable. I wasn't trying to dry them so hard where they would be crisp and that can take a long while unless you've sliced them really thin. In any event, uh, this was the consistency that I wanted and so I've got these that I've got the skins on which I really like for snacking 
and then these have the skins removed uh, because I'm going to be using these and I made less of these. I made just about what I thought I would need for a recipe that I'm going to make uh, that involves using dried apples. And so I've got those uh, separated out from the ones that I have the skins on. And what, how I like to store these while I'm waiting to use them is I just put them in a, in a jar with, you know, a nice seal to it like this. And as you've probably seen me use in some other videos, I really like these oxygen absorbers, especially whenever you're working with food that you've dried in the oven or that you've dehydrated and you want it to maintain the level of dryness that you have, whether they're somewhat pliable like these or, um, or you make, it's especially important when you make the apple chips or any kind of chips, maybe vegetable chips, anything that you want to stay really crunchy, it's very important to use these oxygen absorbers. And I'll put a link below. They're very easy to find and they're very reasonable. They sell them on Amazon and in some of the big box stores like in the camping sections. So I'm just gonna put that oxygen absorber in and then I'm gonna store my peeled apple slices right in here until I'm ready to use them and then again, these are fine for snacking on too. I just, uh, as I said, I'm gonna use these in a recipe that called call for dried apples that don't have the skins on them. Then all I'm gonna do is just seal this jar and I'll go ahead and put that in my pantry. Now I'll show you the way that I like to store these ones and these are actually gonna be eaten very quickly. And I just want to uh, show you the way that I like to uh, display them uh, that I think looks very cute. I just like to take some kitchen twine and I like to string them onto the kitchen twine and then hang them up. I think it looks very, very cute, very old fashioned. So look how cute that is once I have them all on the string and you can even make it even longer with more, I have more apples still drying, but I just think that's so cute. And the aroma, boy, it's just heavenly. I mean, you could even just, if you had two little hooks, you know, and you wanted to hang these up in your kitchen or even put something down on the bottom here so that uh, they didn't fall through and just hang them straight like that. They just smell so good. This would even make a wonderful craft. Maybe if you use some um, uh, craft wire and you could make like a little wreath out of it and maybe tuck some herbs in. I think it'd just be delightful. Maybe some rosemary, uh, things that dry well and, and stay firm. But I think there's a lot that you could do with this. This is wonderful with the fall coming. We get our apples a little early here in Texas because they can't take the real hot heat. Uh, so our, you start seeing apples from places like Lubbock and whatnot uh, here in Texas uh, in July and August. But you know, as the fall comes and you've got apples coming into season in your area, uh, this is really a fun, a fun thing to do. Not only to enjoy to eat, but as I said, you know, maybe make a little craft out of this. Now to hang this in my kitchen, and what I'm gonna do, or just to put on a plate and we'll be nibbling on it. I'll just tie it up like this and just make a little bow, nothing fancy. I mean, like, as I said, if you turn this into a craft, you could really do it, you could really do it up and make it very cute. But then I'll just put it like this and then I can just hang it up uh, anywhere that I want. Or I could just loosen the string and it could be really cute just on a plate like this and then you can just loosen the string and people can pull it right off the string if you've got it at the table for a snack or you've got some company over and people, are, it's fun. You can just cut the string real short and so they'll start to fall off and then people can just pull them off until they're all finished. But this is great and this goes really nice, especially if you have folks who have to go grain free and you do, they don't want to eat any crackers or you don't necessarily have grain free or gluten free crackers, whatever the case may be. Uh, these can really make wonderful um, things in place of a cracker uh, because you can top uh, you can top them with cheese and they're very tasty and if you get them to the point where some are a little crisper you know if you use the the green apples uh, like the Granny Smiths, uh, they really can make a nice cracker. You just put a little cheese on that. Even with the ones that are a little more pliable, it's nice, they have a little chew to them, uh, but they're not tough in the least. And then you can enjoy something that's basically gluten-free. Well, I'm gonna give this a taste. Mmm, mmm.
well, these are really tasty. I think you're going to really enjoy them. And I think just topped with a little cheese or something, they're not too chewy at all. I think they'd work really well. <laughs> I hope you'll give this a try. Drying apples in the oven is very easy and they're quite versatile to use afterwards as a snack or even as a craft. Well, if you'd like to learn more about traditional nutrient-dense cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I have a short playlist of nutritious apple desserts using whole grain flours. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.